We'll end with one viewer question. Uh, Gemma, do you want to say hi? Hi. What, what have you been doing while we've been talking? Hi. No, what have you been doing? Have you Hello. Been, hi. You've been watching what? TV. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's my babysitter. All right. All right. So, so we got one. Uh, Lydia, we'll let you go because I know Lydia has to leave. Uh, a viewer question. Let me cue it up. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Blue of Green Tank. I'm a cultivator in coastal Maine. And I really appreciate you fielding questions like this. Uh, my question revolves around living soil and uh, decomposition rates and nutrient cycling from season to season in a greenhouse that is not climate controlled. All right, so what we have here is a couple grassroots fabric beds, living soil edition, um, equipped with blue mat, blue soak. And I built a soil that the intention was high porosity um, good drainage and getting away from the use of unsustainable peat and so what I did is I used a greater proportion of rice hulls in the soil um, and I would say outfitted it with a pro appropriate amount of uh, organic amendments and my uh, plan was to uh, put around six inches or so of hard wood chip and then inoculate it with King Strafaria mushroom spawn and we have a nice thick mat here and then I laid down my blue soak um, and everything did really well last season and now going into this season I was surprised and looking in a few spots that the rate of decomposition from what I'm used to inside in my living soil systems is far uh, lower and so my main question is what can I do in this bed to stimulate some rapid decomposition to ensure that I have enough nutrient cycling to provide my plants with what I need this year? Um, so if you have any um, suggestions, whether it be a more of inoculation of worms, as you can see, there's one slithering by right here. So they have survived the winter, but I figured that they would self-populate. Um, or maybe a sprouted seed tea or compost extract wondering what you guys would recommend appreciate it thanks in advance all right scott i'm gonna let the wife get this one all right sarah Woo. do it wife you guys so, so, so that was that was a long time viewer first time caller yeah yeah nice. long time viewer first time Excellent. professional welcome yeah, here's, here's a video that question was cool. you know? yeah that was and solid I like that. Yeah. yeah i like uh -huh. it yeah um well first of all um i would say there's a couple of things off the bat that I would kind of steer on this is that um, anytime you're wanting to increase the nutrient cycling in a system, you need to quantify what you have first and what that balance looks like. So I would get it quantified because you don't really know what you got and where you need to um, address the issues or any changes until, until you take a look. So I would quantify that if you're serious about this. Um, the second thing is, is you want a natural decomposition in the system, a sort of natural steady decomposition in the system that is advantageous to growing a plant and not necessarily um, a compost site. So I would say that is steered by the amount of organic matter and the combination of organic matter in the system and on top of the system. Um, so First and foremost, if you're growing, if you're growing cannabis, if you're growing any cash crop, right, for 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 money or whatever you're doing this seriously, I I would make sure that your organic matter and your um, rates of nutrient cycling are the first and foremost priority of the system, and that requires oxygenation of the system, and that means that the soil you need to understand that the soil needs to respire. And for the soil to respire and breathe, it needs to be able to get access to that air. If it's smothered with any thick cake layers of anything, whether that be caked on new um, minerals that aren't are too much, you know, anything can be too much. It, it, you know, any organic material, any min mineral material can be too much if it's if it smothers that um, surface layer, even if it's roots growing in the surface layer. So you can have. You can have a living mulch layer, a crop layer that is too much, that it's holding on to so much water that now you're getting gnats and now you're getting other things like that that maybe you don't want to have to deal with in your system. So um, understanding that 
when you're dealing with a living soil system, you want that aerobic respiration in the system. So yes, you want organic matter and that can come in the form of roots. Make sure that they're not overwhelming your system. If you're getting too many gnats, thin that down. Make sure that your mulch layer is something that is not suffocating the system. Again, if you're having gnats, you're seeing that the, you're, you're accumulating water on the system. And don't try to, emulate necessarily too much of a, a decomposition in in the soil per se leave that portion for composting on its on its own to, off to the side i would i would i would suggest so um, those are the steps that i would immediately take is just um, I get that he, it sounds like he's in a colder climate and he's trying to buffer through when he didn't have the plants and that's fine. Just take off that huge mulch layer when you go to um, plant the plants and make sure that your soil can respire, that it can breathe, um, that you can kind of see here and there into the soil and see what is going on. Now, if you're in a hot climate and you want to mitigate um, water loss, you want to make sure that you have enough mulch layer that you do mitigate that, that water loss. So um, it's just a, everything is context and, and a balance, but keeping in mind that you want that aerobic um, microbial life doing those processes for you. That's what gives you all the nutrients in the form that you want them. That's what gives you all the enzymes. That's what gives you all of the um, hormones and different things like that that the plant needs and that's what engages the genetics of the plant to give it what it needs when it needs it so um, i mean microbes aren't perfect you do have to balance that with you know your mineral profile too but anyway i, I think what's and, important oh, go ahead. Hmm. i was gonna say on, de on decomposition though when if, if you're laying that much rice hull into a media and you're not putting in enough of a nitrogen source in order to go along with it, it's effectively drawing a, as a nutrient sink. That's right. Wouldn't that also slow down that decomposition process? Because yeah. you almost like whenever I've used rice hulls in a mix, mm -hmm. I compost it first and then add it. I don't add it mm -hmm. as an aeration component because for me, it's always been a nitrogen thief. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it ends up it ends up stealing my effective nitrogen in, in order to break down naturally under microbial level. That's right. And so mm -hmm. he might have had enough to drive fertility, but he's not getting enough of biological activity in the way he needs to really do composting. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and I'm just curious to know from your opinion, you know, does that make sense? Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Which is what I was going to say is that the conditions are what's important for. You know, if there's no water out there, there's no organisms doing any decomposition right. um, at all because wherever the organisms are, whether it's under the snow layer or in the rainforest, they need ideal levels of moisture for those sets of organisms. Um, they need organisms that will operate within those temperatures. So if his bed doesn't have any organisms that are suitable to operating during those extreme cold, then nothing's going to be happening anyways. Right. Um, you know, Dr. Lane did a bunch of research and her work found that some of the highest rates of decomposition happen under the snow layer during the winter. And what, what she um, supposes is happening is that where, the, where the, the snow meets the soil, it's not completely frozen and there's a little free water layer that is the ideal moisture percentage for organisms to perform decomposition activities. And so I would start to look at the main differences between his indoor that's having high rates of decomposition and the outdoor that's not having high rates of decomposition. I would think one of the easy components is he's watering the indoor and he's not watering the outdoor because he's just letting it try to decompose. So if there's not adequate moisture in that compost pile, so to speak, then nothing's going to be happening. Mm. And then if there's, too much of anything, you're suffocating it, and again, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. So we need adequate and ideal aeration um, and levels of oxygen for rates of decomposition to happen. You need ideal levers of moisture for that decomposition to happen because they need to be awake and operating with certain amounts of water. And then you need the organisms that will function and operate under those conditions with which they're under. And you need you need that um, again that that 
taking a look at what organisms are there, are, are the organisms even there to do the decomposition? Mm -hmm. um, so you may be asking the system to do something that it can't really do at this stage in its evolution. Mm -hmm. So, And he did ask about acceleration techniques. And yeah, if you add supplemental things that can encourage biology, which will encourage decomposition. Uh, one of the things that he mentioned was the sprouted seed tea, um, which is a very popular thing. Um, of all the things that collapse beneficial populations of organisms in the organic sector, I would say the sprouted CTs are the most effective and they're just as capable at completely wiping out soil organisms as an application of a systemic fungicide is. They have the same amount of um, dropout. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. People don't think about that, but an accelerant can also blow the head off. Yep. So yeah, you can start your car with a little shot of ether into the air cleaner every day, but at some point the motor is going to blow up. And so, you know, if you do add anything to that mulch layer to accelerate decomposition, you have to also factor in that we're, most of us are way over applying things, which causes a actual destruction of the organism populations through overstimulation. So you need to not collapse it through overstimulation like a boom bust effect mm -hmm. like in any ecological system so like if, in, if you have too many rabbits and now you're going to have a big proliferation of coyotes and whatever eats rabbits and then they're going to decimate the population and then you'll have too many of the predators and that that can go back and forth in extremes in the microbial community as well yeah That's what he's talking 100 percent, 100 percent. and scott you had said something interesting about uh what elaine said about uh snow and what happens underneath it now i know so he uh blue is growing in maine but he's growing in a greenhouse so the snow there's not a layer of snow but if you if you didn't have that top can you talk about what would happen with the snow and what goes on underneath well and i'm i'm yeah i'm not necessarily advocating adding snow either i just meant i think what's important is I think what's important is that the snow is providing the ideal level of moisture on the soil surface where the decomposition is happening. And so if he harvested those plants and never added any more water in there, well, water, oxygen, and microbes are the three things that cause decomposition to happen. So without the water, it's not going to happen. Um, without the oxygen, it's not going to happen. Without the organisms, it's not going to happen. So. You know, whether he adds moisture out there, I, I think what he really needs personally is he needs to get a good foundational composting technique to get that um, aspect covered to where he is providing benefit to his farm in the off season. And, and just let the soil be soil. Don't try to force it into composting because by the time you plant again, you might still be composting. Uh, like Kevin said, you get too many rice holes, your carbon to nitrogen ratios off, your composting is gonna be ineffective and you're gonna have problems. So I would say focus on getting a really healthy worm bin. You know, you don't need a ton of compost. Everybody's after like mounds and mounds of compost. Like Sarah and I take little tiny totes, like three cubic feet, so two soil bags, of compost will treat 40,000 square feet of cannabis. Like you don't need, if it like has a the right amount you know what I mean? Like being in a Rubbermaid tote, that's enough compost to treat 40,000 square feet of plants. Yep. You don't need a massive amount. What you need is a very healthy amount of compost. And you know. what we call, what we're trying to term um, biologically complete so that we de delineate and di differentiate between like municipal compost, mm -hmm. which is a very different thing than the type of compost we're talking about. So um, biologically complete just means it has, it's inoculum grade. It has all of those organisms we're talking about that are doing the job that he's asking um, the system to do. Mm -hmm. So. All right. On that note, Gemma, do you want to close us out? Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, thanks everybody, guys. and thank you, Gemma, for being so patient for almost. Yeah, three thanks, hours. guys. Thanks, Peter. Right now. Good seeing you guys. Yeah, you too. too. And and we 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 got Chris Trump next week, so nice. Dig into Tune in. This is sharp. <laughs> sharp. Right. Right on. Bye, guys.